Welcome to the SimScale platform. In this video, I will use the SimScale platform to structurally analyze an underrun protection device of a truck. So let's get started. The SimScale platform runs completely in your web browser, so you don't need to install anything locally to start with SimScale. Just fire up your browser, browse to simscale.de, where you can find plenty of information about the platform and its community, and create an account. After filling out the sign-up form and a small email confirmation, we are good to go to access the platform. In order to access the platform, hit the blue login button in the top right of our website, type in your login credentials, and hit the green login button. If it's your first time on the SimScale platform, the Getting Started Tour pops up. I would recommend that you have a look at the video at first that shows you some tips and tricks on how to get started very fast with SimScale. Afterwards, you can take the user interface tour that explains you step by step each of the important tabs that you will be using on SimScale. And in the end of the tour, there is a very detailed step by step instruction for your first project. So let's start with our analysis. The first step is to create a new project within the workspace. We hit the new project button, give a name to the new project, choose the measurement system and click on create. This creates a new project within the workspace and the project overview on the right shows that this project is completely empty. So let's change that. We hit the upload geometry button, choose a step file that we have on our local computer, give a name to it and hit the upload file button. After a few moments, this CAD model shows up in the project overview. And under Actions, we choose Show, and this directly takes us to the next tab, to the Mesh Creator, where the CAD model shows up. I can rotate it, and I can change the rotation center by double-clicking somewhere in the geometry. Here, please note that I prepared the CAD model. We will use these faces in the front to assign loads later on during the analysis. And as you can see, I prepared them in my CAD system such that I have them available here for a later load assignment. The next step is to create a mesh for our simulation. So first we check on the dimensions of this CAD model. This seems to be fine, so we make a right click on the CAD model, hit the create new mesh option, which automatically creates a new tree item on the meshes. We change the name of the mesh to mesh1. And now we will take care of the actual mesh operation that will generate the mesh. SimScale offers multiple mesh operations that can be used for different types of analysis. The most easiest way is to start with a fully automatic tetrahedralization that just has a few parameters to adjust. Here we will specify the desired mesh order. We will choose second order elements that generally lead to more accurate results. We will save the mesh operation and hit the start button. After confirmation, the mesh job is automatically carried out in the cloud. The job status box in the lower left always keeps us updated about the progress of our simulation and meshing jobs. Depending on the size of your model, the meshing can take a few seconds and up to minutes. Here we get the mesh after a few seconds and then we can visually check the mesh. Again, we have the faces that we will need later for a load assignment within the mesh. And now we can review it if the local refinements are okay, if the mesh size is okay. We can check on the fixation holes in the top if they are okay. And we also have quantitative information about the mesh. For example, the event log shows you how many nodes and elements have been created, etc. Having created and reviewed the mesh, we can move on to the actual simulation setup. So we will switch to the next tab called Simulation Designer. Here we start by hitting the new simulation button. We will give a name to that. This is the P1 load case of this analysis. And the first step in every simulation on SimScale is to choose on the actual analysis type. This basically defines the physics that you're interested in you have fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, acoustics, but what we are interested in is a structural mechanics analysis, namely a static analysis. Saving the analysis type automatically expands the 
The tree on the left with all the entities that you have to define in order to run this simulation. The first thing is the domain. On the domain, we choose the mesh that we have just created in the mesh creator. This mesh is then automatically assigned to this simulation. And the first step that we will do is to create entity sets. This basically groups relevant faces together. And um, later on, these groups will be available when assigning boundary conditions. So here we will group the three relevant load faces in the front, P1, P2, P3. And as a fourth entity set that is relevant to us, we will group the fixation holes together. So we will select all of them, hitting the group button, and again, giving a name to it. In general, for a SimScale simulation setup, you can just move down the navigator tree on the left. All the green dots and the blue dots indicate that these entities are fine. And the red circles indicate that you have to change something there or assign something there um, in order to get a running simulation. Here we can see that the materials are missing. So we add a new material, just leave it as it is, the standard steel. And now we have to define where this steel shall be applied. So in this case, we just have one part. So we can just pick the volumes and hit the Assign Selection from Viewer button. Or you can just use these pickable entities, make a drag and drop, and save this assignment. As the next red dot already indicates, the boundary conditions are missing. So we will use the right click, add displacement boundary condition. And this is where we're going to define the fixed surfaces. So the surfaces that are not allowed to move. Here we can see that all the three degrees of freedoms are prescribed with zero. So they are not allowed to be moved. And now the face sets, the entity sets that we defined two steps earlier are of advantage. So we just assign the fixed entity set and are good to go with this boundary condition. As a next boundary condition, we will assign the actual load. In this case, a pressure load with a specific value. And we again assign the P1 phase. So this is the load case where the phase on the left is assigned. We can also use the show boundary condition in viewer. And here we can see that this pressure boundary condition is assigned there. The same goes for the fixed boundary condition where little locks appear near the faces that are fixed. So this setup looks good. So we can move on. The next two green dots already indicate that we don't have to change anything. Here it's about the linear system solver. So choose direct or iterative solvers. It's fine here. So we'll just stay with the default setup. Also on the simulation control, it's fine for us. So let's move on to the simulation run. A simulation run is basically a snapshot of your simulation setup. So here we will make a snapshot, hit the create new run button. And now all the settings of the simulation setups are saved within this run and you can't change it anymore. This way you can keep track of all the simulations that you ran on SimScale forever. So if you want to run another simulation run, we just change something in the setup and create another run. That's the concept. In the post processor tab, in the navigator tree, we can see all the runs. In this case, we only ran one, so there is only one solution field. By clicking it, the post processor automatically loads. Here we can see the results without a color map. So that's the model that we just uploaded. And the white circle at the data set allows us to change the color map. So we switch to the phonesis stress and we will use the color bar to actually get an idea of how high the stresses are in this case. So we have 342 megapascal here. So just below the yield stress of this steel. And now we can use different filters to further analyze this data set. Here we add a warp by vector filter that allows us to warp the structure according to the computed displacement field. We have very small displacements in this simulation, so we cannot see it with a scale factor of one. So we enhance the scale factor to 10. And this way we can actually visualize the displacements better. 
So let's hide the standard data set, assign a color map to the filter, to our warp by vector filter, change the color bar, and now we can see the displacement field. So we have in this simulation 1.3 centimeters displacement at the outer side. The workflow in SimScale is kept very open. So you are always free to upload your own meshes, to upload complete simulation setups, or like in this case, to download the results generated with SimScale and use a local post-processing system. This concludes this tutorial on how to analyze an underrun protection device of a truck. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, there is an example project available within the SimScale library. There is a step-by-step -step instruction tutorial within the documentation, or just feel free to shoot an email to the SimScale support team. And now, happy simulating on SimScale.